We were talking about uh, evaluation strategies. Uh, and there are different evaluation strategies that are applied in functional languages. And uh, to introduce the concept, let's uh, imagine this example here. We have four definitions of functions. We have fun k, that's the name of the function, with two arguments x and y, and uh, the result is x. We have function r, and the argument set, and it returns r of r of set. We have function d with the argument u, and the body says if u is equal to 0, then we return 1, else we return u. And finally, we have fun uh, successor, uh, takes one argument v and returns uh, v incremented by 1. And now imagine that we have this function, that we have this definition, we define a name v. And we associate, it, associate, it, associate that name with the value on the right-hand side here, which is a complex expression. Uh, and the question is, which value is associated with v, and how is it determined? And this expression on the right-hand side consists of four radixes. <clears throat> Remember, a radix is, uh, is a reducible expression, something that can be reduced. So if you look at it, the, there are four radixes here. That's, uh, the first one is k d successor of 0, if you look at it as a one single radix. Then d successor 0 is another one. The third one is successor 0. And the fourth one is r of 2. So we have four radixes. And leftmost evaluation order is commonly used in, in uh, functional program languages. But uh, the question is, which is the leftmost of, of these three here? So if we look at the original expression, we can say that the one r of 2 is definitely not leftmost. So it's the question of which of the three uh, k d of successor 0, d of successor 0, or successor 0 is the leftmost. Which, uh, how do we proceed when trying to uh, obtain a value from this expression? And there are three strategies. It's evaluation by value, it's evaluation by name, and then lazy evaluation. And Notice that this is something that we talked about in the context of uh, lambda calculus. We, we use the term call by value and call by name. And lazy evaluation is actually just a uh, variant of, uh, of uh, evaluation by name. So look at, let's look at the uh, evaluation by value first. And this is, uh, evaluation by value is often called eager evaluation, or applicative order, or innermost evaluation. And a radix is evaluated only if the expression, which constitutes its argument part, is already a value. So we're doing call by value. It means that the argument uh, has to be evaluated fully before it, it is sent to the function. So the algorithm that is used in evaluation by value is that we scan the expression from the left, choosing the first application and counter it. And then the first application will look like this. We have a, a, function, a, a, a function expression and then we have an argument expression. Then we evaluate the functional expression first, and then we might have to do it recursively until it has been reduced to a value uh, of the form of, of a functional type of this form, f and x, and then we have some body. 
Then we evaluate the argument part, the AX of the application, so it reduces to a value. We have to reduce the argument part to a value because we're doing evaluation by value or, or call by value. And finally, we reduce the red X. Then it, the red X looks like this. We have a functional value on the left hand side, and then we have a value on the right hand side. And then we just uh, apply uh, um, a reduction to that and go to 1. So in our example, Uh, the leftmost expression is chosen first. Our example looks like this. So it's key KD successor of zero that is chosen first. That's the leftmost one. And KD and successor are already values because these are just uh, names for functions as we saw here. K is a function, D is a function, successor is a function. All these are function names. The, <coughs> then the first red X to be reduced is then successor of zero because we have a function value, successor, and then we have a, a, a value or argument zero. And we use rewriting Remember how successor zero was defined. It was just defined as it takes one argument v and returns v plus one. So we're applying zero to that function. It will get get back. Uh, we will get back one. Uh, we remove the lambda and we uh, in the bot we have zero plus one, which is one. So the result of successor of zero is one. Then we apply that result to d. And again, we apply rewriting D, the body of D set. Um, if we go back, the body of D is, it takes an argument U, and then if U is equal to zero, then one else U. If U is equal to zero, then one else U, we send one to it. So we drop the lambda and it says, if one is equal to zero, then one else one. So it actually reduces to the value of 1. So d of successor of 0 is then 1. So we have k of 1 left. And k of 1 is evaluated to produce the value uh, fun y is, uh, returns 1. Let's go back. How was k defined? k takes two arguments, x and y. Uh, if we send only a single argument to it, it gives, a, gives us back a function that given an argument y, it returns 1. Because we sent 1 to it. If we send 1 to k, it will give us a function that given an argument y will return 1. So that's why the value of k of 1 is a function that, given an argument y, it just returns 1. So at this point in our evaluation, the overall expression which we started from, which was this one here, we evaluated the, the leftmost one, it gave us a function that returns 1, and then we have an argument r2. And the in the algorithm, we have to evaluate the argument because the argument has to be a value. We have to fully evaluate the argument. It's called by value. So we have to evaluate r of 2. How do we do that? Well, r of 2, when we evaluate that, let's go back to the definition. r of 2 is then r of r of 2. And then we evaluate that again, and we get r of r of r of 2, and so on. So this is actually inf infinite. This is, this is endless. And because we have to evaluate r of 2 before we can send it as an argument to the function, uh, 
we will not get back any result. It's it's undefined result in this case. Now, if we look at the second strategy, which is evaluation by name, which is also called normal order, as we talked about in lambda on, on, on our discussion on lambda calculus, or outermost evaluation, then we scan the expression from the left, again choosing the first application encountered, as we did earlier. We evaluate first the f expression until it, until it has been reduced to a value of a functional type. And then we reduce the red x, notice, without reducing the argument first. We reduce the red x using the beta rule and go to 1. So if you compare this to the evaluation by value, the third part in the algorithm was to evaluate the argument part, AXP. We don't do that when we do evaluation by name. We send the argument without evaluating it to the function. That's the only difference between the two algorithms. So what happens then in our example? Uh, well, our k, remember, we saw earlier that k is a function that takes an argument y and returns uh, if we go back it takes an argument x and will return the x so if I whatever I sent into it here I will back, get back a function which expects an argument y but it returns the x here that was the first argument so k of d of success of 0 will then be written to a function that takes an argument y but returns d of successor of 0 because d of successor of 0 is our x that's the first argument to k the result of that is a function that expects an argument y but returns d of successor of 0 uh, so the overall expression then looks like this f it's a function y when we give it a value it will return d of success of 0 and then we have r of 2 once if we go back our original expression was like this k of d of successor of 0 and then r of 2 we first evaluated the f expression here on the left hand side and that resulted under evaluation by name in this f uh, expression a function that given an argument y returns d of success of zero now what we do now is we apply reduction we send the argument into the function without evaluating the argument first. So when we send the argument into the function, we drop the lambda and we replace all the occurrences of y with uh, its, uh, its value, which is r of 2. But y is not used in the body of the function. So when we do this, it will reduce to d of successor of 0. We drop the lambda and what remains is d of successor of 0. Then, if we have d of successor of 0, we send the argument success of 0 to d without, without evaluating the argument first. So, remember d said... Uh, had the parameter u and it said if u is equal to 0 then 1 else u. What is our parameter now? Well it's success of 0. So we replace our u with success of 0 both here and here and then finally it is at this point that we evaluate the argument. We send uh, 0 into uh, <coughs> sorry we send 0 into 
the successor function, which will uh, give us uh, uh, 1. So we have 1 is equal to 0. If 1 is equal to 0, then 1, else success of 0. 1 is not equal to 0, so we uh, execute the else part, and success of 0 will give us uh, 1, finally. And that is then the value that we finally get, uh, that we finally assign to the v name here. So under call by name, we got the value 1 back, but under call by value, we got a undefined value, because the, the computation was infinite. So it's important to understand this difference between call by value and call by name in, in the functional paradigm. In the call by, when we have call by value, the value of the argument, the, exp the uh, uh, argument expression is fully evaluated before it's sent to the function. In call by name, uh, the argument expression is not evaluated until very late. And that's why it was called, uh, uh, we refer to it as lazy evaluation or late evaluation in, uh, in uh, lambda calculus. Now I mentioned Finally, I men just mentioned this term lazy evaluation. This is just really a form of evaluation by name. So notice that in the in evaluation by name, a single red X might have to be evaluated more than once. And this actually happened in our example. We evaluated successor of zero here, and we evaluated again here. And the reason is because we didn't evaluate its successor of zero before we called the function. We do it very late. So it, there's a chance that something like this happens, that we have to um, evaluate a single expression more than once. And this can be very expensive, especially when the duplicated red X requires a significant amount of computation. And to fix this problem, but still maintain the advantages of evaluation by name, uh, the lazy strategy, the lazy evaluation strategy, proceeds like that of uh, evaluation by name, but the first time that a copy of a radix is encountered, its value is saved and will be used should any other copies of the same radix be encountered later. So if we go back to our example, once in lazy evaluation, uh, when it sees uh, an expression like successor of zero, the copy of that result the result is 1, is saved. So when it sees successor of 0 later, it doesn't have to recompute that evaluation, but just looks up the value that had been saved earlier. So call e evaluation by, or sorry, lazy evaluation is just a form of uh, evaluation by name.